So honestly, guys, we've all been there. Your buddy posts a picture. He's got 20 slabs on a table. He's got a slab in his hand on the boat. You look at the bank behind it, and you're like, <laughs> I know where that spot is. Ooh. So you head to the lake and you steal a spot and you become a uh, beep. So how do you go from a spot stealer to a spot finder? Let's find out. Now, in 90% of my videos, I show the bank. I'm not afraid to let people fish my spots. And that's just a, a rule of, of just me being a genuine good person, I guess. Because a lot of videos, they, I mean, they got the camera so high, you can't see nothing but the water on the boat. I mean, with, with the technology these days, there's honestly no way to have a secret hole. There's no way to have a secret brush pile. I mean, there, there's little tidbits that you can kind of hide your brush piles, but that's for another video. So now, before we get into these tips, I would like to thank everybody that's been subscribing. We're almost at 4,000 subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the red button down below if you want to learn more about crappy fishing or fishing in general, how to become a better angler. Because that's what I strive to do with this channel. So on today's topic, we're going to teach you my philosophy of heading out on any body of water how I'm gonna find a brush pile. This question I always ask when someone says, I just can't seem to find brush, Steven. Nah, everywhere I go, I just can't find no crappy. Where are your brush piles? I go, hold up, <laughs> wait a minute, hold up. How much time on the water have you actually put in? How many hours have you stood staring at this screen right here? How much time do you get on the computer and look up the best possible areas to look at this screen? And most of the time, 95% of the time, they tell me that they fish the same areas they always fish and they don't take, you know, two to three hours out of their time to go find new brush when the fish ain't biting. Or, if you've never been on a lake before, they don't take two, three hours to find the brush, and they just, I, I don't know what they'd be doing. So that's tip number one. You got to put time on the water. I cannot tell you how many hours I have spent just looking at a screen, idling, uh, going over, marking waypoints for brush that don't have fish on it, that could have fish on it next month. And you got to go back and check it again. You know, uh, there's been a lot of time on the water, but I, with the time that I put on the water, I get the gratitude of going out on my home lake, Lake Murray, and I can show you probably <laughs> over 200 brush probably right off the top of my head that probably has fish on them at this time. It's my summertime spots in my head that I know I can go to. So that's tip number one. You got to put time on the water. If you're not, the second tip is how are you executing fighting these brush? Are you just randomly idling around? Or are you strategically planning your trip to find brush? Now, if you're just going out to fish, fish your stuff. But if you're going out to find new stuff, you want to go on Google that and look this up. It's going to be playing right here behind me. I'm going to pull it up. Go to Navionics. Pick what time of year. I'm going to go, this, this is my formula, guys. If it's fall and winter, and the water temperature is 75 to 60, 15 to 25 foot. If it's under 60, 15 to 30 foot. Springtime, 8 to 15 foot. Summertime, 8 to 25 foot. That is just off the top of my brain of what depths I would look at for these time frames. And that's what depths you want to find on Navionics. It is summertime. I want 15 to 30, or whatever I said, 15 to 25 foot, I think. 
I gotta find somewhere that's got some oxygen. That's the number one thing in the summertime. You gotta find brush where the top of the brush is not in the thermocline. So I'm gonna find these areas that have deeper water, deeper drop off, deeper channel swings, channel swings in the creek. And you can do all that on the computer for free right now before you even go to whatever lake you're going to. So my number two tip, use Navionics to your advantage. It is free, doesn't cost anything, just like subscribing to this channel and hitting the thumbs up button for me. The third and final tip to why you're struggling to find these brush piles, it's gonna be kind of controversial. If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry, but there is no excuse for not finding these brush piles. If you don't have a fish finder, there's old fashioned ways that you can find brush. You can drag an anchor till you hit it. Don't recommend that, honestly, don't, don't. That's kind of a joke. You can take a 2D sonar, you can buy them for about a hundred bucks. They will find you as many brush piles as somebody with side scanning. It just takes more time. You go back to tip number one, time on the water. If you spend enough time looking for something, you will find it. And that is basically life. If you spend enough time perfecting something, you will get good at it. No one's gonna hand you a list of waypoints. No one's gonna hand you all the crappy brush, all the, the, the best points in the world. Get out there on the water, go on Navionics before you hit the lake and find the brush and load your live well full of the crappy.